Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu ba -ba -da, Helps me more than you can believe In this week's episode ba -ba -da, I'll be talking to Brown Bell Steve He's awesome Hi there, my name is James and thank you so much for checking out my podcast Dad Mind Matters Helping men to safely navigate family life without losing their minds. In this episode, I'm gonna to talk to a good friend of mine, Brown Belt Steve, who I've been training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with since about 2017. I started Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in 2016, and I can honestly say it's had the most profound effect on my mental and physical health. Let's hear how Brazilian Jiu Jitsu has affected Steve's life. When did you start Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? I started February 2027, not 2027, sorry. I started... You, you cyborg from the future, come back to <sighs> 2017. Mate, what am I going on about? Um, I started Jiu Jitsu February 2017 with a blue belt. Um, he just started his own little thing and I had done some judo with him. What was that? Um, that was at the old Brighton Judo Club, what is now actually Elements. Okay. Um, and yeah, that was cool. And then I was with him for six months and then I knew of um, Grand Union and I was like, it's right around the corner from me. It's got loads of black belts, loads of colour belts. And, you know, I was just training with this blue belt and a load of white belts. And I was like, why don't I try this place yeah. out? And I remember my first class, it's right in this corner. And uh, Caesar paired me up with you. And for my first class, I was with Poor you. It was on a Wednesday. Steve. No, no. And it I was like, we, yeah. and, and, you know, going to a place and having those friendly people around you, you know, rolling with you was really like, we drilled together and then we rolled together, it was really nice. I think Friendly. that was the first and last time I ever sat you, I think actually. <laughs> I think accidentally, I thought, I'm going to get him while he's, he's trial class and then from then on. Because you are now a brown belt. Yes, I'm a brown belt. One, one striper. One br brown belt. Which is one pretty striper. awesome, man. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, I don't really feel like a brown belt a lot of the time um, because I'm just a hobbyist, I'm not a competitive brown belt. But, you know, I do jiu jitsu for the fun, fun element. Uh, you know the social element here the friends we have here um, and you know I wanted it more for the self-defense because I've got kids and you know my yeah. daughters and I wanted them to eventually be able to help them with because I think jiu-jitsu is amazing for kids and I yeah. think it's amazing for um, for girls especially man like you literally learn to fight on your back like if, if a girl was if a girl was able to get sexually assaulted like knowing jiu-jitsu like, probably yeah. the best martial art I've ever yeah, seen yeah no yeah agreed yeah. and uh, you said one thing you said I really liked actually is that you, you want to think that attracts you to this place and I think oh, we are very lucky in our academy to have like what I don't know seven or eight black belts yeah, yeah number yeah. of brown belts yeah. lots yeah. of purple belts so it's it's as much about you you need to be somewhere where you, there are lots of people better than you in order to it's going to it's going to accelerate your progression isn't it? yeah Massively. yeah and, and to have the lineage we have, you know, Caesar to be a black belt under Roger, one of the greatest, and the Gracie lineage, just, it's amazing, man. And, yeah. to, and for us, you know, we both live in Salt Dean, for this to be five minutes from our house. Is a touch. It couldn't get better, really. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, what you probably slightly glanced at, but why did you start Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Could you boil it down to one reason? Uh, so, um, I, I, I'm a stunt performer. Uh, in the TV and film industry, but I had to do a martial art to qualify as a, st as a stuntman. So I done. Really? I was looking at all these different martial arts. Yeah, actually, that's like the stipulate. That's yeah, the, you have to you do. Have to have you, you have to do oh, one, okay. and, and it, it always changes. I think, um, and I think roughly it was the belt before black belt you had to achieve. So I done Japanese jiu jitsu for a year, and I really enjoyed that, and I learned a lot from that. And then I was doing judo at the same time, but then I really realised for my job I needed to do kickboxing because right. you need the fancy punches and kicks you know that's what sells on, on screen so but whilst I was doing that I was still like you know looking at jiu-jitsu and stuff and then I found like Brazilian jiu-jitsu and I was like this is different to what I've done before mm. the Japanese stuff and I just really liked the look, look and I just went down the rabbit hole and just, yeah, just yeah. realising how fun it is and when, I, I, I enjoy punching and kicking I think it looks great but I don't enjoy getting punched and kicked <laughs> no <laughs> surprisingly no yeah. But you know, when me and you come here and we do jiu-jitsu, me and you could go 200% at each other. Yeah. And we might be a bit achy the next day, but we're not going to be battered and bruised from punching and kicks to the head. All that brain trauma you get to. Yeah, and it's a proper workout. Yeah. A mental and physical yeah. workout. Yeah. So, so when I finish, as soon as I finish my um, 
level I needed to get for my kickboxing. I was doing that all the way in London and driving up to London twice a week and I was just so glad to actually be like, I've got this club five minutes down my road, yeah. what, what I really started liking and that was that. Question number three, what's your proudest moment so far in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? My proudest moment? Um, I think maybe get my brown belt, obviously yeah. that's a big Tough achievement. To beat. But you know, I think Jiu Jitsu is so wavy, especially for me. Like I had, a, I've had the last month. Like I've really just had no sort of desire to come and train. I yeah. even spoke to Caesar about it, and he said he's had that before. And I think everyone goes through through waves. It depends of, what else is going on in your life, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, and, and for me, so I'm living, living through very difficult, stressful times. Yeah, and uh, but sometimes that's, so, that's sometimes it's so good to to literally go to jiu-jitsu and just forget about your life problems and forget about all that stuff that's going on but then sometimes you can be so fixed of like no i need to sort this out i'm not going to go tonight you know i've got all this paperwork at home still i've got invoices i've got this da -da -da -da. yeah it's choosing the battles isn't yeah it? sometimes you're like actually yeah yes going to jiu-jitsu is great but it's, I'm, it's not going to sort out my worries about my mortgage yeah. to fix this but i also agree that there are times when if you if if you're stressing about the variables that you can't control, get on the mat. Yeah. Because you, you, you won't change it, but your perspective will be a lot more methodical, a lot more, okay, the, the problems are there, but I know in the same way that, you know, I was two seconds away from being tapped tonight, I, I had patience, I didn't panic, and I found a way out, so there is always a way. I think that's what jiu-jitsu helps me with, is just like not to panic yeah. about, not just rolling, jiu-jitsu but just life yeah. stresses um you know like, another thing i would i would say to like because you know we were talking about this a little bit earlier with kurt and about people starting off and giving up and stuff like that and the thing is it, it's just doing it regular like yeah. when you're going up two three times a week you know i mean you just sticking at it doing it regular like you're going to eventually get somewhere with it yes and, you know five years down yeah. the line before you know it you'll be blue belt purple and you're going to be like you know, like, look actually how much I've learned in these five years because I just stuck at it. Like, I've been doing Duolingo Spanish at the moment. I All literally right. do five minutes a day. Yeah. I'm pants at it. And I literally feel like giving up yeah, but you're much, Yeah, but you're much better than someone who wouldn't have the courage to start. And yeah. I think, I actually think sometimes, even if you can train once a week, yeah. which is not ideal, but it's, it's once a week you're not in the pub. It's yeah. once a week you're not at home stressed out with yeah. the family. Yeah. And actually, okay your progression will be slower but there will still be progression yeah and actually more importantly i think what you'll get from being a part of this sort of family is as useful as another stripe on your belt yeah right number four okay so why should someone train brazilian jiu-jitsu why should they why shouldn't they That's well the question. That, yeah okay let's make it more specific <laughs> why should a dad train brazilian jiu-jitsu a dad needs to train why did a dad with two Daughters <laughs> under the age of ten. Trained because daughters. that, because everyone needs that moment away from their from their kids yeah. to get a breather, right? And jujitsu is perfect for that. You know, if you if you can get there, you know, a few evenings, maybe a weekend sesh, and literally just have that nice little breather away from your kids. Do you know what I mean? It will give you that time to recharge, and then you're going to actually have more focus and time, and probably more love for your kids because you're not constantly being battled by them. And then again. The stuff that you learn from jiu-jitsu, you can pass on to your kids from jiu-jitsu, especially, there's so many fun jiu-jitsu games. Yeah, yeah, there are. Kids. Like, I, I think it's silly, like, it, for me, I think it is the best martial art a, a family can do. And look at the families here. Yeah, like, there are a like, number of people who, yeah. mum, dad, yeah. and, and a number of kids train. And like, you know, our partners don't train, but our kids do train. And, yeah. Um, you know, um, I'm sure I have tried getting my partner into it, I'm sure you have as well. Yes. But, you know, you can't win all battles. Well, the problem you. is she'd probably be much better than me, which would mean that I'd have no control <laughs> in that area of my life either. Yeah. Um, and finally, what piece of advice would you give to someone who's maybe watched this and thought, all right, I'm going to give it a go. What tip to someone, what piece of advice would you have liked to have heard before your trial class? Um, just like, just enjoy it. You know, and just give it your all and don't worry about it because you see so many brand new people and they're literally so scared and worried that they've done bad but literally like, no one does good first time no. it's like it's, it's actually impossible like and okay maybe there's someone that comes in and they seem like, they seem like they're really good but then you find out they've done years of wrestling or judo yes. or some other martial art yeah this is a really difficult you've yeah. got to be i think 
Keith said it in a, in a previous podcast. You've got to be okay with sucking at something yeah, yeah. for a long time. Yeah. You know. But, you know, like, that's what people are so worried about is, is failing. And it's just about... Give you yourself more credit for having a, a strong enough ego to even attempt at something like this. Because most people don't. Yeah. And, you know, for, for the newer people, like, you know, look, say, you know, you went to jiu-jitsu last night. You got... You went with another white belt. You, you know, you're a white belt and you got caught in an armbar. Well, maybe you could look, you know, maybe a little homework if you want to do a little bit of extra. You know, go and do a bit of studying and find maybe a good armbar or something. Yeah. Or not where to put your arm in the first place. It just depends how hungry people are for it. There's so much knowledge online now. Yeah. And there's a lot of bad stuff on YouTube as well. And not to get too caught on that. But there's good stuff on YouTube as well. And there's good stuff, there's good video instructionals out there by world champion people. And, and if you really want to go down the rabbit hole of literally studying and progressing it's, with jiu-jitsu. It's very addictive. Yeah, it's really addictive. I think, yeah, because sometimes I come down and I'm a 46-year-old purple belt and I will find myself, the only reason I'm not about to be tapped by a two-strike white belt is I don't panic. Yeah. That's the only reason. I don't panic. I wait for him to make a mistake. He does. Yeah. Because he tries to rush it. I will film it in a minute for you. Um, anyway. Don't take kids to jiu-jitsu. No, because, <laughs> actually, no, do. Because... Don't take them to the adults' class at jiu-jitsu. Just take them to the kids' class at jiu-jitsu. Hi, girls. Mate, thanks for that. Cheers. I really hope you got something in this podcast. And if you train Brazilian jiu-jitsu and be interested in being involved in a future podcast, please comment below. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care. Dad Mind Matters. Helping men safely navigate family life without losing their minds. Two podcasts every week on a Monday and a Thursday.